Good morning. I mean, uh, with uh, with the, what we have learned so far, that is about the water pollutants, and you know the typical uh, um, uh, BOD modeling. Then you know it's about this groundwater modeling and groundwater pollution. One very important thing by now we have seen that you know there is a, there are uh, many ways water can get polluted either in the surface or in the groundwater. And now it is our turn to learn about the, the treatment of wastewater. Wastewater treatment becomes a, a, a very important area of uh, very important area of environmental engineering. We will see in these classes about 6, 7 classes that I would take on this. You know you will try to understand you will understand you know how this wastewater treatment is designed, what are the priorities, what are the typical methods that we generally follow in wastewater treatment. Having to say that you know let us bring out you know the stages you know the parameters of interest for wastewater treatment. See this, uh, uh, this is parameter of unit operations, unit operations. <coughs> unit operations in wastewater treatment. Right? The unit operations to start is any kind of whenever there we are discussing with water, anything regarding water, you also would understand that there would be a flow, there would be always flow and the measurement of flow is a very important part. You know this is remaining is the measurements, flow measurements, flow measurements, flow measurements what we would try to do is most of the things that we would know try to find out is flow rate, flow rate, flow mix what are the material that we have in the flow mixture, uh, what would be the material that is more is important for this flow mixture, flow mix. Then we should have, we should have this you know about the flow our other things about the flow pH, all these aspects has to be seen in great detail. This is what is etcetera, we would see this, these are the flow measurements that is the start with any kind of wastewater treatment method begins with the measurements. I mean what are this, then finally you know there is a reaction time, reaction time, what are the reaction times generally for this reaction residence time, residence time means the time when a, a a pollutant or a reactant would remain within the container. I mean, there is a total time that is required, residence time, reaction time, then other rates, you know, the flocculation rates, all this, the flow measurements becoming measurements. I mean, the how this, all this, you know, where we have said those things, but you know, here itself, as you can see that uh, in terms of uh, liter per minute or liter per second flow mix, it be what would be the solid, liquid gaseous uh, uh, phases inside the flow, the uh, flow pH all these things comes to be very important. These are the flow, flow of unit operations that we generally start with. The second one most another very important part is this you know is the screening. Screening is one important part in wastewater treatment where we generally try to separate out separate out the immiscibles, immiscibles, the miss, uh, those which cannot be mixed with the water. There will be something you know and as you can know says there are the, to be understood in this fashion. One is which is not at all dissolvable in water, there are many things like you know which you know that they are not dissolvable in water at all and there are few things which are dissolvable, but as such anything which has dissolvable in water is also dissolvable to a saturation limit. So, till that saturation point it would remain dissolved above than that more than that it will not be dissolved state. So, you know just like if you continue to uh, uh, mix salt in water the salt would be 
dissolved till a certain point that is the saturation at that temperature pressure in water. Okay. So, as after that the salt would come out of the solution, salt, salt would be generally either remain uh, uh, deposited at the end of the glass or would remain suspended as the case may be. So, this is what is this is separating out the immiscibles, the screening is a very important part of I will also talk about I will give you a flow diagram where you will be able to understand this, but these are the unit operations that we generally try to do or carry out comminution. Comminution. The word comminution you must have come across in blasting. Say the blasting is what is basically comminution means size reduction. Size reduction, say by different methods, by shredding, by shredding, by shredding, by crushing. by crushing, by shredding and by etcetera, many different means that we generally meals are another milling, crushing etcetera. So, you can see this combination in the size reduction by shredding and materials like that, you know it has a great importance as such. What is the importance of combination mostly in one great important part of combination is that as soon as you break something the surface area increases. The surface area has a great role to play. The surface area is you know it increases the, the rate of reaction, a, it in exposes more area uh, uh, available for uh, reactions. So, this combination essentially does that. So, you know this is what is very important part. There is many cases when you know, if you just shred it a substance say you know something like you know a bag you know a leather bag in water. If you just you know if you just keep it like that and if you just shred it I mean completely uh, cut into pieces and then put in the water, the biodegradation time of the shredded parts would be taking lesser time than the larger one as, uh, as simple as that because the larger surface area of exposure. So, this is combination, this is combination is a very important part, this is the next is the flow. equalization, flow equalization, this is you know flow equalization is that you know is about uh, equilibrium, equilibrium seeking parameters, equilibrium seek seeking parameters. I mean say you know flow equalization would be something like wherever you know that you know the uh, control of control of flow rate and control of flow rate uh, uh, in comparison to in comparison to in comparison to control of flow rate in comparison to control of flow rate in comparison to uh, Mm, say, compare say, uh, say sedimentation rate, sedimentation, sedimentation rate in comparison to control of flow rate in sedimentary rate. Then you know other you know designed parameters, combining equilibrium seeking parameters with 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 the design, with the design, with the design. Say if you are is a very important part of experimentation. In an experimental part, you know, wherever you are trying to design or experiment with something, one very important thing is that that you know you must design for a perfect say a type of flow rate, a time that would be associated with the different reactants should be in connect uh, in contact with each other. Then you have to uh, the the flow rate has to be matched then you have to you have to be the flocculation flocculates or whatever would be deposited the removal of that at a particular periodic intervals. These times the intervals the when actually how much time take it takes the measurement of that and to form an equilibrium. So, that 
whatever is the input, the input and output are balanced. It's not, it should not be nothing like that, you are putting more input, you are not getting that amount of output. So, there will be a process somewhere in a process getting stuck somewhere. So, this kind of situation is when we are, we are trying to balance this kinds of situation, we generally talk about flow equi equilibration. So, this say uh, this flow equalization that is what we generally talk about, this flow equalization or something there are, there are called a equilibration is another term where there is a, the equilibrium sort process equilibrium. Equilibrium is input and output are matched. This is what is the condition of equilibrium. You know in situation like as you know in a perfect situation in a, uh, in a different, uh, different types of reaction in the water environment. Say if you are choosing for a particular reactions to take place say you know at a particular pH certain deposition has to take place you are aiming at that. So, equilibrium would be at that pH what would be the rate of flow so that the equilibrium is reached. So, the input and the output there is a proper matching. This is what is important you know is most of any kind of flow, uh, flow kind of situation this particular parameter is of great, great important, importance. So, you know if there is another important aspect you know which you should also deal with is that you know is uh, mixing. mixing. So, the mixing is this uh, mostly say the mixing of the reactants. Mixing of the reactants, you know uh, this is of it is also of great importance in the sense that you know in many cases in a design there is a risk always uh, there is a risk in the flow that you would not be getting the designed rate of output design rate of output say you know the, the reaction mixing is something like say if you are sending uh, these are the typical things that take place say you know if you are you are using lime in the water. So, in such cases when you are using lime in the water or you have, if you are adding alum in water what happens is if you are if the water has a relatively high velocity. So, the, the alum and the water would not come and mix the alum, alum would not find enough opportunity to meet with the re reactants of. So, alum uh, say the lime would not find enough opportunity to meet, uh, meet with the, the reactants that it is designed to uh, react with. Is that clear? I mean so this kind of situation takes place the mixing of the reactants is a very important part. So, that the larger part of the body, body of water say you know if you are mixing tank if you are mixing tank in a situation like this you will find that you know a, a top column is not being mixed the bottom column is only getting mixed. So, that would how to make a homogeneous mix of the in the total column this is what is the mixing parameters these are the situations where we would like to know about more about the mixing. So, here is the mixing of the reactants you know mixing of the chemicals chemical reactants chemicals gases gases etcetera you know which are uh, maintaining uh, and uh, and uh, and maintaining maintaining and maintaining the solids in suspension solids in suspension maintaining solids in suspension this is what is the mixing part flocculation. Flocculation is uh, one great important this is a flocculation to promote promote agglomeration of the small particles agglomeration of the small particles. Have you ever seen I mean say you know if they would understand this agglomeration the process of agglomeration is the use of alum in water. Have you ever seen what is the how this alum reacts in water next time if you go you know go home or anywhere 
try to see what alum does. Just a piece of PK, small piece of alum, drop it into a pitcher you know, or in a, in a container full of raw water and just see what it does. You just leave it for some time. Yeah, yeah. It would it would clot the, clot the all particles. What it is actually doing is agglomerating the particles. So one aspect of alum use is agglomerating small particles together. So what happens is, as a result of that, as a result of that, the mass actually increases. So as soon as the mass increases, it would be once it gets agglomerated, it the mass itself the as the density increases. So, as a result of which you know it begins to settle or remains suspended at one point and so that they are also visible at that way you know they become visible also even as small particles in solution they may not be visible, but when they are agglomerating it becomes more visible you come to know what are the parts to be removed. So, this is what is a agglomeration of flocculation uh, this flocculants or the flocculation is a great important part of wastewater in engineering sedimentation. Say one or sedimentation. The sedimentation is the removal of removal of settled particles, removal of settled particles, settled solid, settled solids and thickening. and thickening, sedimentation, removal of settled solids and thickening. So, you know you have to first of all after you have flocculate, you have done the flocculation, but if it is if it remains suspended at in the body of the water like you know if you see in a pump or in a container like this, you would expect that this this particles this flocculants after the flocculants have generated, you would find the particles suspended like this. Irrespective of this in a sedimentation process you would generally try to see that this particular in the body of this water this particulates settle at the bottom. So, that you know it becomes easier for you to remove them it becomes time to time periodically you can remove the settled particles and this is this is the place you know where agglomeration is taking place this is the flocculation. either by the flocculated product this is what is sedimentation. So, you know here you can see that the difference these are sedimentation this is what is this is what is desirable in a plant we will try to have say the material being sedimented it is only then when they are sedimented it is easier for us to remove them it is important for us to have to have a situation where we can remove the material. The next is you know the flotation is the flotation is another another uh, you know this uh, froth flotation and the selective this is a selective selective agglomeration of selective agglomeration selective agglomeration of selective agglomeration of finely divided substances, finely divided substances and substances of a particular type. Selective agglomeration of finely divided substances of particular type, if you remember this flotation is what happens in the flotation chamber is does not matter you know whether it would in a flotation chamber you know in all cases it would generally try to attach something a some of the particles a selected particles like you know if you remember this if you are in a mining process is very common in mining and concentration process froth flotation what we generally do in the froth flotation we generally use a particular say and organic um, or metal organic substance say sodium xanthate or potassium xanthate that we use this sodium xanthate and potassium xanthate in a particular in a copper concentration process it would only agglomerate with the copper particles and bring it up in the surface 
bring it up in the surface this is the flotation part. So, you know here it would be another very important part is selective agglomeration because you know you do not require to take everything up you would write only try to take a very typical uh, particle that you want to bring that up and want to remove them for different purposes in froth flotation in copper you know this this particular may be you know this particular substances it may be in due to say the removal of dart or collection of a particular element say enriching copper or this kind of things you know we would use that froth flotation. So, you know here also you can see the flotation is being also very important part filtration is another filtration filtration you know where it is say the fine filtration is the removal of fine residual of finely finely divided finely divided finely divided residual material removal of finely divided residual material this is what is the procedure of filtration. We have to filter out also we have seen you know mostly so you will not remove you will not like that in the flocculated material or the sedimented material to remain in the flow you would have to separate them out and how to do that this is one is the filtration is one method by which we do not generally do it do it. There is another aspect you know this today is you know this is filtration and micro filtration or micro screening. micro skinning I say say, say a example for an example is removal of algae removal of algae or any other substances you know algae kind of uh, mostly the algae and say fungus also etc if it is if they are present if any so, this is about micro uh, screening gas transfer there would be you know during the process of reaction to reactants you know there would be a number of uh, gases would be produced uh, gases like nitrogen the gases like carbon dioxide say this particularly you know then this several organic VOCs a large quantity of VOCs are produced H 2 S is produced. So, this you can see this needs to be this gas transfer this gas to be generally has to be removed sometimes it has to be added added or added or removed. Addition is also required this is the gas transfer you know sometime the gas transfer this addition is required just for to initiate a sudden reaction to initiate a sudden reaction gas transfer may be needed. So, otherwise you know in any chamber if you just see you know we will try to see you know say activated sludge process or any other process you will see you will produce lot of gases also that gases also have to be removed time to time periodically that has to be removed. So, otherwise this can be of the dangerous consequences you know the gases can do you know so particularly if it is a closed process if the, if there is a huge built up of gas it can be extremely dangerous also. So, time to time thus the gas has to be removed the degassing or this gas transfer is taking place you know this another is volatilization volatilization and gas striping volatilization and gas striping you know you see here you can see there will be at there are some substances like you know some substances which at particular temperature pressure would be would be volatile. Uh, generally in STP mostly we know standard temperature pressure we know those substances which are kept out in the open they would remain they would volatile they would be uh, vaporized, but there would be some situation where if you increase the temperature a substance from either from the liquid or from the solid may go into a gaseous phase that is also the volatilization and gas striping. Gas striping is taking place particularly 
with the use of say in a volatilization as you say is as I have said at at a different temperature and pressure at different temperature and pressure certain certain substances will go out certain substances will go out of the solution will go out of the solution in the form of vapor from the initial initial solid or liquid form. The form of vapor from the initial solid or liquid form, form say the liquid form. So, you know you can see this solid and liquid form is a camphor as you know the camphor as a substance if you heat camphor you know it does not go into a liquid phase it immediately goes to into a vapor vapor phase. So, it is something like that there will be many substances a liquid say liquefied nitrogen gas liquefied oxygen whenever they are released in the uh, standard temperature pressure they become volatile. So, these are the gas striping is also takes in place you know here is a gas striping is a case where particularly a number of you know uh, say uh, uh, there are substances like you know uh, say granulated activated carbon GAC we call them the granulated granulated activated carbon. This granulated activated carbon this is called granulated that activated carbon granulated activated carbon what is this aspect of this granulated activated carbon the basically the difference if you just see coal and and uh, it is basically coal and coke that we see the coking the process of coking by which the coke is produced what is the difference the essential basic difference is the number of surface areas are more the surface area is more not now number total surface area is more. Suppose if there is a substance like this if say a, a, there is a substance like this this has a regular surface regular surface very you know very plain very smooth surface like this. But on the other hand if this surface can be made to be uh, like this where there are you are increasing the surface area you are increasing the surface area and as a result of that you know in, in particularly when you are increasing here and here you see this is the granulated part this is is a granulated and activated we call it this activated because these surfaces these surfaces are very uh, good to uh, uh, keep the gas absorbed in those openings or in those holes or opening that they create. So, is across the body that is the difference between coal and charcoal. What you see in a coal and a charcoal is basically the coal would be having lesser surface area for the same mass the coal would have a lesser surface area than charcoal or for that matter coke also. As a result of what what happens is as this surface area increases within this surface area within this surface area number of gases can be absorbed like one of this you know is a uh, one of the areas which is you know most of this water that you can see you know in your water filtration plant that you see in your hostels or anywhere there is one chamber which is basically full of granulated activated carbon is most basically charcoal treated charcoal treated and you know sized charcoal it is not a large size charcoal as the size increases the surface area further increases. So, you know the size charcoal this charcoal is through which the water is generally passed. What happens is the bad order the order that we generally have in the bad smell in the water that can be removed. See even after treatment the water might contain some of the uh, say the substances which are um, uh, which can generate bad order or say bad smells. So, these orders can be the odorous gases can be absorbed 
by this activated carbon surfaces. This is what is the volatilization and gas striping. We generally use this gas striping in various uh, uh, industrial wastewater treatment methods. Okay. Also using that right. Yes. Yes. So this is the charcoal. The use is the granulated activate. The only difference is the surface area is not saturated. The surface area is in a highly exposed surface area and this surface area under a particular pressure, under a pressure condition can absorb a number of gases, mostly the odorous gases as a result of which the water becomes much more acceptable. Okay? The water would be much more acceptable as such. So, uh, so this is what is required for the gas driving. So, these are the processes that we generally deal the processes and parameters that we deal in wastewater engineering. So, okay. having gone from this let us let us try to see you know how this what are the methods of wastewater engineering that we generate the, the typical classification methods and the typical process that we generally observe. Here you can see this now it is that you know in many cases like this if you just see you know wastewater influent let us make a process first wastewater influent. This is why water water is getting inside into the system. The screens, uh, there would be screens and this is screens, screens and screens and combination. This is where they would be screened there would be screened and they would be they would be laid by a process like this this is screening and combination we will find a great chamber then we will find a grid chamber grid chamber this in the grid chamber we generally try to separate out this you know most of the foul materials most of the foul materials so i'll come back to this grid chamber after the grid chamber you find that you know is we generally call this as a primary settling primary settling primary settling primary settling in the process of this primary settling we can find out this you know primary settling we will see this here we will we'll use a loop here let me come back to that you know later on. So, this is what is called the aeration process aeration tank this is aeration aeration then comes the secondary settling primary settling we have seen then we see secondary settling. we have secondary settling. After the secondary settling we generally use after this you know if you just see this secondary settling now this secondary settling here continued say A here A continued. So, you here can see this secondary settling we generally use chlorine. Chlorine is a chlorinated substance chlorine can be used any kind of chlorine you know in the form of bleaching powder or whatever you generally use we can use alum we can use say uh, lime all these substances that can be used here then this is what is this is what is they would be he added here chlorine contact here this is this uh, contact basin contact basin contact basin this chlorine here is a contact basin in this chlorine or whatever we generally try to do this would be actually say the, the, the drawing would be somewhat like this this is you just 
correct this drawing this is like this okay i think i made a mistake here so you know you say this is a mixing chamber this is to say there is a mixing mix in a mixing chamber mixing chamber then we go for go for mixing chamber this is what is the primary settling then the mixing chamber then it will go for the uh, the secondary uh, this is primary this is primary settling aeration secondary settling after this is the this is called okay this is called then we go for tertiary treatment then we go for tertiary treatment so you know here this is called the tertiary treatment so you can see this you know this is the process let me explain you first what is happening here is wastewater with this wastewater remember a standard wastewater i mean any water that is coming from from different sources water coming from different sources to the plant what we expect what we get in the water say you know water is you know basically high turbidity high turbidity high bod high BOD it might or you know high BOD, high COD or high TDS, high TSS all that you will have. So, this is this depend upon the characterization of the water, water what are the water has, what are the things the water has. If it is a particularly say sewage waste water you may not it, this is you will find mostly the high BOD and high COD as I have said in mostly say oxygen another very important thing is you know oxygen deficient oxygen deficiency oxygen deficiency this would be deficient in oxygen mostly all this waste water would be deficient in oxygen apart from that apart from that there will be some gang materials they say there is uh, the, the uh, we generally called uh, tramps tramps these tramps are say a shoe a number of shoes then say this uh, 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 pi iron pipes iron pipes then you will find say say um, plastic is another very important thing plastics. So, you know you can find this is what is in the influent if you just see the character of the influent. So, what we do in the screening in the part of the screening and combination if in the part of the screening and combination what we are trying to do is we are just trying to separate out in the screens itself a screens and wherever required you are breaking them. So, that in a large part of that in small pieces it passes to the screen. Okay. So, you can see this you know so in the screen also in the screen whatever is available in the screen whatever is the excess size the plus size that we can see the plus from the screen would go through a combination process would go through a combination process would go through a combination process and would be again referred back to the stream it would be again referred back to the stream of water. Okay. So, this can be seen like this, but this so what we do with the iron pipes or plastics or things like that all iron pipes are they would be broken no they would be just separated out they would be just taken out. There would be some uh, other implements you know by which this material would be taken out from the body of the water. So, here you see the water that we generally observe here is itself we are just trying to find out here is you know if it is if this is the flow is like this you know a flow is a high velocity flow high velocity high velocity flow this high velocity flow going through the screens and finally when it is coming to a grid chamber in the form of a grid chamber it would be this generally large and wide the reason being is as a result of which you know this the uh, the the uh, the kinetic energy of the water the kinetic energy of the water would be converted into potential energy as the potential energy increases the velocity decreases so the velocity decreases means you know settling increases 
essentially we have to settle those things particles we have to settle when they are in a in a flowing in a particular above the critical velocity they would remain in the suspension so as soon as you reduce the velocity what would happen they would begin to settle down so this is what is the grid chamber so in the, in the grid chamber whatever has passed through the screens would be fast allowed to settle would be allowed to settle and this settled in the grid chamber so a, in a grid chamber if you just observe a grid chamber a typical grid chamber if it is an open grid chamber it would be like this where you can find out say this one is you know you, here you would find out in an open grid chamber like this where a large part of this would be in a grid chamber what would be happening is so this is how the water is being passed this is the level to be maintained as you can see this water coming down so here the level is maintained so here the the particles which should be settling here the particles that would be settling here would be taken out okay so the settle you try to understand this this is what is this is what is coming from the screen from the screen with lot of tss tds it also has tds you cannot do much at this level what you are trying to handle this at this time is TD, uh, tss the more total uh, suspended solid all kind of suspended material this suspended material as this velocity reduces so you can find a large amount of large body of particles large body of material would begin to settle at the bottom isn't it would settle at the bottom as they settle at the bottom as they settle at the bottom the water would be more clarified on the top water would be much more clear on the top and this water would then be taken out okay see till this time till this time we have not we have not seen we have not seen any kind of any kind of say any kind of uh, reactants being added to the water we have not used added anything so far we are just trying to physically remove things from the water so this is also there will be a followed by a grid chamber there may be another primary primary settling tank where even smaller particles would be allowed to settle okay even smaller particles would be able to settle then we would add then would be this is what is the aeration then the next stage is aeration what we do in aeration the aeration has a great importance let me explain a little bit about aeration here this aeration has a great role to play in most cases you know all this kind of reactions you know if you are if this particularly this in the oxygen uh, oxygen oxygen depleted water water this can result due to high very high very high tds and very high very high very high bod right in both the cases the, the water may be substantially depleted okay you remember you remember that plot i have shown you that you know that increase salinity the oxygen concentration decreases so this is what is the increased concentration increased dissolved concentration of a equivalent salinity would actually reduce the oxygen in water the level of oxygen in water oxygen al also be reduced by this bod also biochemical oxygen demand the oxygen that would be used for decomposition of the substances so this cause this oxygen depleted water this oxygen depleted water would be aerated they would be they what would be done what would be done they would be you know the stored there would be the typical methods of aeration is you know typical method of aeration over would be say the mixing this is one of them is a stirring operation that we generally do stirring a large bit of stirring that we do say the surface aeration also can take place we generally allow it to come in contact with the um, air around it so as a result of this this is you know here it is how it helps it helps significantly it helps significantly because you know it increases it increases the rate of 
rate of biochemical decomposition. It increases the rate of biochemical decomposition. It also increases it also increases the reaction rate reaction rate because many reactions in water would require many it increases the reaction rate because many reactions would require oxygen as one of the reactants as reactions would require oxygen as one of the reactants. I will show you some example where you would find that the oxygen is a necessity necessary part not only not only for biochemical degradation, but it is also required for chemical precipitation purposes where oxygen is required oxygen has to be added. So, this addition actually helps that the next part is comes is the secondary settling after this uh, this kind of after this one is added there is maybe another secondary settling chamber another secondary settling chamber a secondary settling chamber in such cases would be here where there would be there would be again another kind another settling would take place till this time till this part we generally known as is till this time is known as primary treatment. So, till this time the secondary treatment secondary settling we generally talk this as the primary wastewater treatment primary wastewater treatment that is say from the screens screens to screens to secondary settling settling. In many cases in many cases you know even in places like you know very many places like even in uh, places like IIT Kharagpur also even the typical wastewater treatment method if they are not using if they are not using any substances at the treatment method. So, basically till this much only primary wastewater treatment. What we are generally trying to do is most of the cases we are not adding anything, we are just allowing the natural reactions to take place, we are trying to facilitate the natural reactions, the substances that are within the water that they are reacting with each other and finally settling. So, this is what is called the primary wastewater treatment, this then comes the secondary wastewater treatment, secondary wastewater treatment where we are adding something here you can see this in the in the last part as you can observe here and I have said here that this one where is the chlorine is being added chlorine alum or lime being added with the water this is what is called the this is what is called this you know uh, the, the secondary treatment this is the start of the secondary treatment in water this is the start of the secondary treatment in water. Now, what happens here is that much of much of this part here much of this part if you can observe now this secondary wastewater is this helps reduce the idea is to reduce helps reduce helps reduce what helps reduce mostly the TDS. It generally the TDS mostly say the fixation of the sulphates sulphates then carbonates bicarbonates bicarbonates and say the sulfides you can think of all kind of substances the radicals that are possible. So, in a here we are just trying to address to the situation where we would try to bring down the concentration of these substances or in the either in the form of a radical or in the form of a element. Okay. So, here this is what is generally we are trying to see here in the final part here at this in the method of treatment here is the tertiary treatment. 
tertiary treatment. The tertiary treatment uh, target target primary tertiary treatment target a particular target a target tertiary treatment target a particular uh, particular element say say a trace element say a trace element trace element which may be uh, which may not be removed by the secondary primary and secondary waste water treatment this can only be removed by may be using a tertiary treatment method so bulk material bulk pollutants in water say iron zinc mostly iron zinc say uh, say sometimes even say uh, copper then say <coughs> say something like copper aluminum all this this bulk substances would be removed from uh, from the wastewater stream by the secondary wastewater treatment but for tertiary treatment you know suppose we are targeting a particular pollutant in water say mercury say chromium say cadmium or say even say arsenic whenever we are trying to do that we have to adopt a specialized technique you know which would be added at the end of this tertiary treatment at the end of the method but this as we can see this tertiary met treatment methods are expensive and so mostly most of the wastewater stops at most of the wastewater treatment stops at the secondary wastewater treatment in our country whatever you are seeing that wastewater treatment is taking place most of the wastewater treatment stops at the secondary wastewater treatment method the tertiary treatment method is being expensive and being you know uh, being generally a much more difficult to control so as, as a result of which most of the people generally most of the places the governments also would not do the tertiary treatment but the case is it is much more necessary nowadays it is much more necessary nowadays because we are finding a number of pollutants in water which which are so which are so uh, i mean uh, uh, which are uh, so resistive to the standard treatments like uh, uh, say primary and secondary wastewater treatment that they can only be treated in the waste tertiary wastewater treatment method so otherwise this can be say in the trace elements say then the organics pesticides. organics pesticides very right pesticides all these pesticides all these require tertiary treatment they cannot be removed by this primary and secondary wastewater treatment up to a part um, below the threshold below the threshold so this is what is all important all right i mean i am coming back to this class again i mean this uh, for this class this can uh, till this this time this part is completed okay this uh, primary wastewater wastewater treatment techniques that we would start now but before that let me tell you you know we would not generally discuss much about the screening and filtration part because you know this is the very basic part i have said but this is uh, there is the method of screening screening method of comminution that i will not discuss mostly but we will start with the primary treatment techniques at this juncture you know is pretty important for all of us to understand the difference between the the what is the expectation about the water suppose this water is coming out from a source any source say coming out from an industry coming out from a sewage pump coming out from a a typical uh, uh, say the, a process like you know a something like food processing waste what are the expectations of the water i mean having seen the water or coming out of a particular industry or a process we should try to understand what we should expect in that water say in a food processing waste water would have high bod essentially it would have high bod but it will have less say uh, inorganic tds less inorganic tds may have some salt may have in that less on inorganic tds so here 
but on the other hand say a mine waste mining related waste water or say waste water where there are only the substances the mixer mixing substances are of inorganic nature we would only observe inorganic salts present in that. So, in the most of this mining waste water acid mine drainage or whatever we discuss about we will deal with that also acid mine drainage and all this we generally observe the water to be of a certain characteristics. The characteristics is initially whenever it is whenever wherever it is getting produced there will be the, the environment would be oxygen deficient this is number one. The, the second point that we would observe in such cases is there would be uh, no uh, very little BOD because mining as such the process does not create any place for BOD to be produced. So, what we would find is this would be high TSS high TDS, but this high TDS was basically due to inorganic content inorganic contents of different kinds of metal cations and anions. Okay. One thing still today much of this can be achieved a great amount of water filtration is can be achieved if this kind of small typical very simple systems are very effectively used. I can tell you with, with uh, all I mean all my understanding about the subject is the earthen filters that we used to see you know you know in, in our childhood you know even say in my childhood especially say you know in cases like that they are as effective as many of the water mechanical or electronic filters that we have observed today they are equally effective. Only most important thing is that has to be maintained you do not expect that the, the that this would be set up for in countries like ours the problem is we set up a plant and then forget about it. We do not really do not make much effort to maintain it if we maintain it this can itself serve a lot of great purposes they can be as effective as secondary treatment methods. So, here this is about a trickling filter as another very important part is you know is uh, that is generally is called is a rotating biological contactor rotating biological contactor rotating biological contactor let me make a drawing first this is how it looks like you will find this you know in the textbook also you know you will find this drawing here but try to do the drawing I will mean, I will make some changes in the drawing because of okay it should be it should be like this and then this okay.